Look, argue all you want, but the single most exciting branch of the worker placement genre is that in the agricultural sector. Nothing evokes excitement and instant gratification like working hours out in the field and harvesting the sweet, sweet benefits of your work. As the name suggests, worker placement is a genre where you take uh, tokens or workers and you place them onto boards or cards, and when doing so, you take the corresponding action. In the instance of Harvest, each player only has two workers throughout the course of the game, and the game lasts for a total of five rounds, giving each player only ten choices. This is stacking itself up against a lot of other games that are more well known that have a lot more to offer. So going into it, I was a little concerned. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek into my conclusion here, but Harvest blew those concerns away. Uh, quickly becoming one of my favorite games that I played last year, and I'd like to go a little more in depth and tell you exactly why that is. Now to do that, I wanna do something a little bit different and take three games from my collection that are worker placement games that I absolutely adore and explain use them to explain why I enjoyed Harvest so much. Uh, first, Viticulture. Viticulture offers a robust, rewarding experience where players have a wide variety of paths that players can utilize in order to achieve points in your own unique way. Harvest does this too. There are plenty of options to take, even if your opponent blocks your way. There's absolutely a benefit to being the first player to a particular spot, but it's not so punishing as to be completely detrimental if you're not. Now, the king of all agricultural worker placement games is arguably Agricola. It's a game that is stressful and punishing and where you're, you've got your own little farm and you have to strive to feed your family. I, and I love it. It's tense and you never feel like you've got enough time to complete everything you want to do. The whole leave them wanting more mentality is in full effect with Agricola. This is due to there being a limited number of rounds to dictate the end of the game. This is utilized in Harvest as well. This game gives you five rounds to gather as many points as possible. That's only 10 workers to place before you have to call it quits and see if your farming ability stacks up against the other players. Agricola also uses a number of cards, giving players specific advantages they can use to formulate their strategy. Harvest takes this idea and strains it into individual player powers that will force you to play differently each game depending on your power and the power of your opponent. Finally, I want to bring up Argent the Consortium. It's a game by the same designers as Harvest, Trey Chambers, uh, in a completely different universe. This is set in the universe of magic and wizards and, and schools. I still have onion in my teeth. Argent also utilizes the backside of just about every component. So in Harvest, it's no surprise that if you don't want to play with asymmetrical player powers, you don't have to. On the back of every unique player board is the same generic farmer that can make it so everyone starts out at the same point. Look, and the reason that I love Harvest so much is it takes some of my favorite features of some of my favorite games and it condenses it down into a small box experience that means that I can play a game that has a lot of elements that I really, really enjoy from other bigger, more robust worker placement games, but I can play it in a span of 45 to 60 minutes. Add on top of that just how simple the game rules are. I mean, the rules themselves are printed on essentially a double-sided piece of paper that's smaller than standard printer paper. It offers the best mixture of components, mechanics, and theme that a game in this time frame and complexity has offered me yet. But every rose has its thorn, and every cowboy sings the same sad song. Just so, no game is going to be perfect. Despite it being a small box game, as I said before, it's certainly not a filler. And that's going to be a turnoff for people when they see it and expect something much lighter than it actually is. No insert needed, but a whole bunch of little baggies holding water potions, poop, scarret seeds, plumpkins... Rockley, Phantom Peppers, Snap Peas, Workers, and Cards will cascade out upon opening this. But despite the box size, it's going to take up space and require some foresight in organizing the table. Also, while one cool aspect of the game is that your seeds turn into crops, which is your currency, if you're careless and mix the two together, there's no real way to split those apart. The reason being that, like everything in the game, they're double-sided. So, one side equals seeds, which can't be used as money, and one side equals crops, which are money. After all said and done, Harvest manages to be one of my favorite games from 2017. It takes what I love about some of these larger worker placement games, and it, it, it takes the aspects that I love so much, and it condenses, and it, it compresses them into this concentrated dose, puts it in a smaller box that's accessible, something I can pull out easily at any point, uh, without losing a lot of the weight or bite of any of those games.
benefits of your work. I regret that so much. <laughs>